Is right into Forsberg's form. Forsberg, I get excited when I hear no turnovers <laughs> for Boston in that time span. But what are we starting with today? Well, uh, first off, let me set the table. We're doing it all about that comeback last night. But I thought one of the underrated things about it was that Joe Missoula pushed all the right buttons. And that was the number that we start with Missoula Magic is zero. Because that's the number of timeouts he's called mm -hmm. in the fourth quarter of last night's game. And pretty much how many timeouts he's called this entire season. I mean, we sit there and we scream at the television. This thing goes from a 20-point lead to a 13-point deficit, and any rational human being would have called a timeout. Joe Missoula is like looking at his dudes and going, yo, figure it out. Figure it out. I, mean, I, 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 like, I don't understand. He's just chomping away at his gum, and he has every belief that his guys are going to figure it out. And I think that trust does permeate. And as much as even Jalen Brown said, sometimes we could just use that minute to kind of compose ourselves his whole thing is I'm gonna put you through this now and then when it really matters in the playoffs you're gonna be able to respond in a way that you couldn't previously and bless him because I don't know there was at least seven different times where I was screaming time out of the TV last night am I crazy no you're not no, crazy okay. because if you were screaming seven times I was screaming probably like eight <laughs> or nine or maybe ten times because the scout was in here with me and I was like call the time out he's like Amina is about to lose it inside of the <laughs> studio but hey if it works for the Celtics works for the guys and it works for me all right what's coming up next I also love that cut line don't call him Zach Morris time out <laughs> so the next number eight minutes 38 seconds this was the amount of floor time that Luke Cornett played to close out that game I don't think of Luke Cornett as your crunch time closing center but as this game was slipping away one of the things and there was a great mic'd up segment as part of the broadcast last night, and they caught Missoula telling his guys, on when they finally got a timeout, which was a TV timeout, he sat down his guys and he said, look, they're only scoring one way, transition and getting to the basket. If you idiots can stop that, they're not going to score anymore. And by the way, I'm going to go big. I'm getting Malcolm Brogdon out of this game. I'm putting in Luke Cornett. And I said, I don't know about this. Like, you're trying to rally. Is Luke Cornett the guy you want out there? Well, if the numbers were essentially the Lakers' next 14 shots while Luke was out there was an average of 15 feet from the basket. Their misses were an average of like 20 feet. They did get a couple layups, but it was way, way, way better than what we had seen to that point. So on a night you don't have Al Horford, you don't have Rob Williams, on a night where you desperately needed to stop Russell Westbrook and LeBron James from getting to the rim, in comes the green cornet to shut it down and make sure you get to a win. The green cornet. I thought it was the Cornish hen. We've got I mean, we, nicknames every single this, week for Luke Cornett. It really does. He's that cool that he has like at least seven <laughs> different nicknames. All right, what's coming up next? All right, the third number is 80. And that's the percentage that Marcus Smart shot from the floor over those final eight minutes and 38 seconds. Here's the crazy part to me, Amina. Mm -hmm. Smart, before the Celtics went on their final run, here was his stat line. Three of 12, three turnovers, four fouls, minus 14, and he was puking in the back of the crypto center because Ugh. he was feeling ill. So, in that moment, Joe Missoula decided that's the guy I want on the floor. That guy right there. For crunch time. <laughs> and what does he do? Four of five shooting, nine points. He hit a monster three-pointer to kind of key that run. But even bigger than everything else, he stole that inbound pass from yeah. LeBron James, got them to eight, and you actually felt like the Celtics had a chance to rally. It sort of gave them that confidence for that final push. And this is what Marcus Smart does. Every time you think, like, oh, Marcus is having a rough game. Maybe they should have gone to Brogdon. But Brogdon wasn't playing great either. Derek White. Derek White usually has, like, good moments in those situations. No, Marcus Smart, loved and trusted. He goes out out there and finds a way to get you to the finish line of a win and this is why I like the same way I, I will stop yelling at the TV about Missoula like if Marcus is having a bad night whatever he's gonna figure it out in the fourth quarter I love also how Marcus Smart when he got that steal that LeBron James looked at Russell Westbrook oh, like, yeah. hey, hey, whose fault is I, we were trying to figure it out last night whose fault it was but I guess you don't argue with LeBron, with LeBron. James no no on the floor. But, well he's gonna have him traded anyway so yeah exactly <laughs> he's gonna make a call about that one last but not least what you got all right the last number is plus 120 now I feel bad I need Tom Giles all up in here to be explaining gambling to me and all that but what I do know is from my elementary knowledge of of betting that's a good number and that is what the odds are for Joe Missoula to be coach of the year right Ooh. now and you can understand right Celtics are on a 62 win pace he comes into this crazy situation has to take over after the email scandal manages to not only get the team to play well and push forward but they thrive, and now there's a chance that they will be the best team in the Eastern Conference. It just it feels like this is Joe's award to lose, even as he's still the interim coach. It speaks to his ability and his confidence in himself. We joke about the gum chewing and the no timeouts. He's got his quirks, but he stepped into this situation and he stayed true to himself. And I think when you're a coach, that is so much of how much, like, you have to do that in, in order to be the best version of yourself. Mm -hmm. And he admits to still learning. He's still learning how to use, like, playing time for guys. But at the end of the day, he has pushed the right buttons more often than not, and he deserves that award right now.